Now, there are a million and one different things that you could be doing when it comes to starting up your own business. But the real question is, out of those million different things, what should you be focused on first? That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode of Black Men's Career. So what's going on, guys? It's Yaziah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I want to show you the number one thing that you should be focusing on first when it comes to setting up your very first business. So make sure that you subscribe and let's get into it. So I work with a lot of clients throughout the year in my signature program, Your Breakthrough Year. And one of the things that I hear from clients the most is, Yaziah, where do I get started when it comes to setting up my business? Should I focus on getting a website? Should I focus on setting up an LLC? What about hiring somebody to get me a logo? Are these the things that I should be focusing on as I am setting up my very first company? And I'm going to tell you in today's video that every time I hear that response, I always tell them that's the wrong answer. 98% of people begin with those steps when it comes to starting up a company. And that's the reason why so many businesses fail within the first five years. As you're setting up a business properly, the first thing that you really want to focus on is establishing a viable business model, okay? So I put together a chart from, for you, right? I've been hiding behind it. Quick little Jedi mind trick. But I want to show you how the common responses on what you should focus on in starting a business is not what you should actually be doing when it comes to getting started. So before I talk about the right things to focus on, I first wanna establish why these things that people commonly tell you are wrong. So let's start about one by one. Let's say that you wanna first get started with a business by creating your website. You cannot create a proper website if you have not gotten immersed into your market first. A lot of people come up with a website based upon what they think is important to say. And setting up a business is not about you at all. You are not gonna be the one that's putting dollars into your pocket. It's going to be your consumers. It's going to be your market. And it's so important to make sure that you are getting yourself immersed into your market, understanding their needs, understanding their problems, understanding how to be able to best serve them before you can ever be in a position to actually put important content on a website. Here's the thing that you guys got to think about. Most people are not going to go on your website more than one time. If you don't have something extremely compelling on that website that you're constantly putting on there day by day, chances are nobody's going to look at it after the first visit. And so we wouldn't do the website first because we haven't even established what we're actually going to put on there. We can't just put on pictures. That's the, one of the things that slips a lot of people up. So many people are focused on making like a nice artsy look good website that they're not focusing on making a website that actually is good when it comes to monetization. Yeah, the website looks fancy, but is this website making money? Two totally different things. So I wouldn't start first with the website because we haven't done our homework about our market. And to that point, I wouldn't come up with the name first. What you really want to do is you want to first focus on, okay, well, what am I delivering to my customers? What's going to be the product? What's going to be the service? What competitive advantage will I have over my competitors in the marketplace before I even come up with a company title? How do I know to tell you all of this? Because these were mistakes that I made when I started up my business years ago. So, you know, I first started off a business about my story on how I paid off over $90,000 in student loan debt. 
And like so many other individuals that become business owners, I wanted to come up with a business title that was real catchy. <laughs> Something that would, you know, be like kind of a hot or hip thing to say, at least in my head. So I came up with the title of the Urban Money Movement. And I called myself the Urban Money Manager. Even though I thought that that was a nice title to have, I would get all of these variations of titles and people would always ask the question, so what is it that you do? What does the Urban Money Movement do? What does the Urban Money Manager do? And people would call me all these different versions of names, the Urban Money Maker, the Urban Manny Manager Movement, whatever. It was a lot of confusion that took place in my title. And a big part of the reason as to why that was is I put the title before I even thought about the product or the service. So what you really want to do is you want to get thought to the product or the service first because your title should ideally be encompassing something that you're doing to serve your uh, marketplace, right? So I went many years having the title of the Urban Money Movement. And then I revamped my business over time and seeing, you know what, this title doesn't do enough to really bring home the point. After I've known now more about my market base, the better title for my company to be is Black Men's Career. Because in that title, I'm telling you exactly who my target market is, what we're going over in this company. So that way, as people begin to see my promotions on social media, on websites, through word of mouth, they don't have to be confused about what does Yaziah have to offer me. As you hear me talk now, I'm telling you that I'm your success strategist. My job is to strategize around how you can become more successful. And so it wasn't honestly until I did a lot more focusing on my customer and what I was going to provide to them to really even be able to understand what title made sense. So that's why I wouldn't focus on the name. Then when it comes to the entity, even when it comes to the logo, these are not the first <laughs> lines of defense that you really want to focus on in starting a business because you've yet to actually establish if your business will actually work. That's what you want to focus on first is what is going to be your right model, okay? Now, there's a lot of things that goes into making the determination about your business model. What I would first be focusing on is what do I do well? Okay, that's the first part. The first part is what is it that I have deep domain expertise over? What does that mean? Well, deep domain expertise means that in an industry or a marketplace, you know more about that one specific area a lot more than the average person, right? So you might know not more than 90% of the people when it comes to this particular industry. Ideally, you wanna know more than 95% of people that's in a particular industry. So the first thing that I would be thinking about is what is my competitive advantage by way of skill, okay? My skill could give me a lot of leverage when it comes to really being able to satisfy my customer. If I get in front of a customer and I'm just your everyday person that doesn't really know much more than your average Joe up the block, why would somebody want to pay me for my skills? This would be the first thing that I would focus on, okay? The second thing that I would focus on is, is there a market big enough to receive all of the benefits that I have to offer. So I first come up with my skill set, what's going to help me uh, stand out over the pack. And then the second thing that I'm going to think about is do enough people on the planet actually want my skill? Now, here's where it starts getting really important because one of the things that you really need to start focus on doing, especially when it comes to this, is 
actually finding your niche within the market. Extremely important. So let's say, again, that I'm in the field of business consulting. There's a lot of business consultants in the world today. There is a big marketplace for people that are looking to establish businesses. But I don't just do any type of business consulting. My business consulting takes place primarily with black men in my target market as a niche. And within that niche, I'm focusing on giving you very intimate group coaching. Most big figures that are in the world of business consulting that you might be seeing on YouTube every single day, they would never take a minute out of their day to be sitting down with you to show you all of the little one by one steps on how to set up your business. You might see them at a conference. You might get into their course that's already been pre-recorded. They're never going to be interacting with you one on one. Right. So I understand that as I focus on the one on one experience or the intimate group coach setting and working with people directly answering their question, that then gives me an opportunity to serve my market in a very unique way. You have to have a unique competitive advantage that allows you to be able to stand out in the marketplace, because if you don't have that then why should somebody be giving money to you? Why wouldn't they just already continue to support the businesses that they've always already been supporting? If you're just another version of everybody else, why does somebody feel the need to stop doing business with whoever they're already doing business with and come and support you? Okay, so once you have the understanding of the primary niche that you wanna be involved in, the next thing that you need to be focusing on is, okay, well, what is the problem that this niche needs to be solved? Okay, so again, let's give another example. Let's say that you have a skill of making beds. You go out into the marketplace, the marketplace is big enough to have people that want mattresses, but are you just going to sell any mattress to any person? No. So that's why you wouldn't come out with a website first promoting a mattress because what you first need to ask yourself is, okay, who am I gonna be making this mattress for? Am I gonna be making a mattress for a kid that's gonna be bouncing up and down in the bed all day that can sleep like a baby? Or am I going to be making a mattress for someone that's middle age that could be battling with arthritis, right? Someone that might be having a lot of different aches and pains in very specific areas. So if I was marketing my mattress to teenagers or kids that are younger than that, the way that I would go about setting up that mattress or marketing that mattress to sell would be a, a totally different than how I'd be marketing a bed that would be for middle-aged adults or even senior citizens. You can't make the same marketing statements to everybody because the way that a 15-year-old person would perceive a bed being good is totally different than how a 55-year-old person would perceive a bed being good. They have different values. They have different standards, okay? They represent a different consumer base. So it's not enough that you should just be like, oh, well, to hell with all of that. I'm just gonna have a website and the website is just gonna have beds. And whoever wants to get the bed will get the bed. Your business won't be around very long at all. I see too many entrepreneurs doing this and then they wonder why their business doesn't have enough traction. You cannot just make whatever you wanna make Put it out into the world and hope that it sticks. You need to focus on setting up a proper model first. Notice this. Do construction workers ever build a home without their first being a blueprint? Do they put one brick into the ground without the architecture already being laid? But so many of us are trying to set up all of these, you know, big homes thinking that we're going to become, you know, big time earners in our business, but we never actually think through any of the things that I'm telling you about here, 
right? Understanding, well, who is your target market then? Who's in the target market of this niche? What particular problem do they have? How old are they? Where can they be found? Where do they spend the majority of their time when it comes to their hobby? Do you fully understand how to be able to speak their language? You know the reason why most people don't go through this right side first? Because this is the heavy lifting of work that they don't want to do. See, it's easy to do all of this stuff because you don't have to actually go out and connect with anyone else. You don't have to study anyone else. You don't have to interview anyone else to gather their thoughts. You don't have to allow their thoughts to influence what you're trying to make. So what most people do is they say, well, you know what? To hell with asking somebody else about what bothers them in the marketplace. Let me just go off of my own imagination of what I feel is great. And then I'm going to make a website out of it. I'm going to make a title out of it. I'm going to go with the entity that everybody else has because it sounds so cool. And I'm going to get a logo, even though none of these four things play a direct part in the money making process. This part has everything to do with money getting made. Because if you don't have the right business model established, I don't give a damn how nice your website is. I don't care how flashy your name is. I don't care if you have an LLC. I don't care how sparkly your logo looks. Nobody's going to buy from you if you don't have a viable business model. If I don't have a viable business model, there's no reason for me to even go out and create an LLC. Why would I file something with the state on a business that's going to flop? <laughs> That's a waste of money. Why would I come out with a title of something when I don't even know the context of what it is that I'm trying to sell? The title should be one of the last things that you really focus on really coming out with because this is where all of the meat and potatoes are behind the business. And this honestly is just a first few of the points that I would focus on when it comes to setting up a business. You know, if I had to do it all over again, let's say I'm starting completely from scratch and I'm trying to build black men's career from top to bottom, you know what I would first do? The minute that I started to have the idea that I wanted to have a business, I would first ask myself the question, well, who then would be the ideal customer for what I'm trying to provide? Would it be a male or a female? Are they young or are they old? Are they rich or are they poor? Where can I find them? Can I find them in the suburbs or can I find them in the hood? That would be the very first point that I would start with, okay? What is the profile of the ideal customer that's within my market? I would think about who the ideal customer is in the marketplace, and then I would start to build a business around this person. So I would say, okay, well, you know what? My ideal customer is probably 25 to 34 years old, black male, right? They spend a lot of time maybe on YouTube, maybe they're on Instagram, they're on these different social media channels. Typically, like what they like to do for hobbies is A, B, C, D, right? I'm not going to put all of this out there because some of this information is proprietary to my business. But what I'm saying is before I ever get started thinking about how to make a website that I want the ideal customer to go to, I first want to understand the ideal customer like the back of my hand. Because if I understand the ideal customer like the back of my hand, I know what my ideal customer will wanna buy. I will know how my ideal customer talks. I will know where my ideal customer goes and I will know how to properly find them. And once I have the answers to all of those questions, me making a website for them becomes easy because I know exactly where to give them the link. I know exactly what to say to capture their attention. I know exactly what title of the business would resonate with them and what would not. 
I know how to be able to garner their attention. What you first have to focus on doing in creating a right business is identifying your ideal customer, right? Understanding what their problem is, not the problem that you want them to have, what their problem is, okay? You identify your ideal customer, you get an understanding of their problem, and you stay within this niche without trying to do a billion other different things. Not trying to make a business for everybody, but making a business within this bubble right here. Stay within this bubble right here. You, you pick a niche, okay? You get an ideal customer. You think about what your ideal customer's problem is, and you stay within that bubble. And then your objective just becomes finding duplicates of this type of person. That's the essence of how you really start a business properly from scratch and you just build a business model around servicing this person. And if you don't have this laid out first, don't waste your time building a website. Don't waste your time coming up with a name because who cares about the name? People care about value more than the name. Don't waste your time trying to file a DBA or an LLC or S-Corp, C-Corp, incorporation. Nobody cares about that, right? <laughs> Nobody's going to be putting money into your bank account because they're like, oh, you got an LLC? Okay, here's some money. Even though I don't care what your business is about because you got an LLC here, I'm going to give you some money. Nobody's going to buy from you just because you have a logo. These are the right things that you want to focus on when it comes to starting up a business. So, I want you to leave me a comment below and I want you to tell me about what your business model is going to look like. I guarantee you, look at the comments after you start watching this video. People will leave super vague responses. They'll be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about setting up this business and I want to, you know, cater my business to men, right? You have to have clarity. How old are these men? Do they have a particular race? Where can these men be found? What do they like to do? The more that you can show me that you know about that ideal customer, the better I think that you could end up when it comes to being successful in your business. The more vague you are when it comes to the understanding of your customer, the more that I'll take a step back <laughs> and I won't be as likely to want to invest in what your company is about because you haven't done your homework. You've just been staying inside of your own head. And as you stay inside of your own head, you cannot make a business catering to yourself. You can only make a viable business if you are delivering value to other people and you can never deliver value to other people if you don't know how to give value to them, okay? So I want you to leave me a comment. I want you to tell me about your business model, primarily what your ideal customer represents and be specific. Don't worry, oh, Yaziah, well, what if I leave a comment and somebody steals my business idea? Trust me, if business was that easy to where all you had to hear was an idea and you take it and run with it, everybody would be the next Bill Gates. Just because somebody's hearing what you're talking about, it doesn't mean that they're going to take it and run with it because they don't want to put in the work. Not everybody is an entrepreneur. Stop finding all of these excuses to not do this exercise and take advantage of this free opportunity that I'm giving to you as your success strategist to actually take a real step forward in moving your business. Not a fake little baby step. I want to act like I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm really faking it and shaking it. No, I want you to take a real step forward. You want to take a real step forward? Go through this exercise and tell me what you come up with. Okay. Let me know what skill you have. Let me know what the marketplace looks like. Is the market big enough? What niche are you going to be a part of? Who's the ideal customer in that niche? What problem do they have that you can solve? And how will you focus on staying within that bubble? If you can answer those questions, then you're cooking. All right? So last but not least, 
make sure that you get a copy of your free gift. I've been putting this in the description box below. Open the description and check it out. This is the Empire Builder. It's going to show you how to be able to set up your company from scratch. It's gonna show you how to be able to go from uh, being at a nine to five job or unemployed to setting up a business for yourself to be able to make the transition to working from anywhere and traveling while making money in your own company. This is what I do in my own professional business, working from home, right, making money, and I wanna be able to show you how to do the exact same thing, okay? So click the link below to get into the Empire Builder, share this message with a friend that's an aspiring business owner, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.